Hey gang, so we've been talking about different methods for creating trails in prop spinning footage. Thus far, we've covered things like smartphone apps, as well as plugins that are available in popular editing software, and even how we can create trails by using transparent layers in After Effects. Our next example is just about foolproof for daytime spinning, and for the first time, we're going to use a lot more of Adobe After Effects' capabilities for analyzing footage. We're going to create what's called a motion tracker. That is, we're going to have the program follow an object that's in motion in our video, and use it to create a trail. Okay, so again, we're going to start off by importing our footage over here and then making a composition out of it. Ta -da. And I'm going to go ahead and shorten it up to only about 15 seconds worth of footage because it'll just be easier to work with that way. Let me find... Yeah, that looks good. So, yeah, trim down the composition and bring it down to 15 seconds ish. Okay, cool. Uh, now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go on a, go ahead and add a layer that is a null object. Yeah, and uh, we will see why this happens in a second here. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and come back down here and click on my footage here in the editing window and we're going to pull up the window for motion tracker. If you can't already see this over on the right hand side of the screen here, you can go up to window and uh, click on it here and that'll bring it up for you. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to click on track motion and now you see how this little square just appeared in uh, the middle of the video window and everything? This is what we're going to use in order to track the poi head. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Oops, see what happens. Okay. okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drag this up to the poi head, kind of place it right in the middle there. And I'm going to zoom in on this point. And these two different squares represent two different things. So this little square right here represents the part of the uh, video that we're focusing on, that we want to follow. So I'm going to set it comfortably inside of the poi head right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom out just a little bit. Uh, this second box right here, so basically this works like this. Um, from frame to frame, the motion tracker is going to be looking for the same set of pixels that you just selected, um, but it's going to be looking for it inside of a certain area. So the larger you make this box, the, the second one, the bigger one, um, the larger the area it's going to search inside of. Basically, this is how far the poi head can get from frame to frame. Um, and, you know, again, this is kind of black magic uh, instead of science in a lot of ways. Uh, the best thing you can do is to uh, create a certain size and then try and set the motion tracker going and see if it works. And uh, if it doesn't, you can come back here and change the size uh, to something that might fit a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go with a not too terribly small size because I think the poi head is moving relatively quickly in this clip. And um, I'm going to go ahead and come back down here under Analyze. And this little play button right here will analyze the clip forward. Uh, I go ahead and click on that. And what we're going to see is as the video goes along, the little box here is going to follow my poi head around if I've done everything right. And it looks like I have. And I'll go ahead and fast forward to uh, what happens after the motion tracking finishes and everything. Cool. So what I have in front of me now is a whole crap ton of what are called keyframes. Um, now this is uh, a new term for some of you guys out there. Think of a keyframe as being something like a signpost that the program is following along. Each and every frame that we have here, it's looking for a given point inside of the video. Um, so essentially these are just guideposts that it follows to know uh, where the poi head is going at a given point. And there's a lot of them because I did 15 seconds of footage here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's say for the sake of argument that say, you know, the poi head went behind me at some point right here. 
And because of that, say this point right here was a little bit off. Well, what I can do actually is uh, I can go ahead and zoom on into that point. And if I want to, I can move it around. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. To correct for it, uh, which hopefully you should have to do very, very little of that. Uh, but as it stands, this came out damn near perfectly, which never happens, and I'm very, very happy about. Um, so I am going to go ahead and... This is going to seem really, really weird, but it'll make sense in a second. Uh, back here down in the tracking window, I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. Uh, first, I'm going to make sure that my motion target here is my null object. Hit Apply. Apply dimensions X and Y. Yep, that's exactly what we want to do. And hit OK. So what did we just do? Basically... Um, right here under our footage, if I open up this track point one, you're going to see a whole long line of keyframes right here uh, that have to do with the position inside the video that we happen to be following and everything, right? Um, so what that did is it actually copied over all of those keyframes up to my null object right here, which you can see represented with this little red square. Now, uh, we're going to do something with this so that we can actually see the trails that are coming out of this and everything now that we've managed to copy over all of this movement here. Um, so I'm going to go back up to layer here and create a new shape layer. Um, and in the shape layer, I am going to go ahead and add a circle, an ellipse. And I'm going to do so. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to cover up my little poi head right here with a circle that I've generated inside the program. And I'm going to try and make sure that the little crosshairs in the middle of it match up with the corner of that red square that represents our null object, right? And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of it to being a little bit more similar to the color of my poi head. You'll see why in a minute here. Cool. Um, so now the final step of this is that uh, under my shape layer right here, I am going to go ahead and set the parent as being null 1. What this means now is that the uh, circle that I just drew is going to follow around null object, which uh, our null object, of course, uh, is following around the head of the poi. So um, if I were to go ahead and hit play, look at that. I now have that uh, circle basically overlaying the poi head all the way around, uh, which means, th th this is actually really good news, um, I can look for an effect here in After Effects that's called Echo, which is very, very similar to the Trails effect that we used earlier in Final Cut. Uh, I go ahead and drop, uh, drag it over to my shape layer right here. And when editing this, I, go, I usually go ahead and advance a little bit further into the frame. And as you can see, there's already one echo right here. Um, these are the variables that I use to determine the length of the echo. Um, I usually find that a length of somewhere between uh, one and uh, three hundredths uh, of a second is, is right about perfect for what I'm looking for. Uh, so as you can see, that second echo has now uh, kind of shown up just behind this one. But there's still not that many echoes. I'm going to increase the number of them. Uh, say like two around 100, because why not? Uh, the starting intensity I'm going to set to 0.69, so it's not quite as bright. And then the decay I'm going to set to... 0.98. So as we can see, this is now a trail that kind of fades off into the distance here and everything. Now, after we've done all of this, I can now try and sample the movement that I've recorded right here. And look at that. That circle that we've created now has a trail going behind it. And this perfectly shows the trails that we create during daylight spinning, which is totally awesome. Now, um, there's one more step to do before this video is uh, ready to export and put out for mass consumption. And that's that it's, it's probably hard to tell from this, 
but currently there's no motion blur on these trails. They're just kind of staccato bits of uh, a circle going back and forth, right? Um, so the last step of this is that I'm going to go ahead and add a new adjustment layer on top of everything. And inside of that adjustment layer, I'm going to search for an effect called CC Force Motion Blur. And basically what an adjustment layer does is it uh, basically imposes whatever effects are on it on all of the layers below. So uh, I'm going to set the motion blur samples to 18. Um, and now if I advance to any point along here, I'm going to see that all of those circles now have become a long blur that reaches out behind me. Now the thing is, is that processing both the echo effect as well as the motion blur effect uh, is really, really hard on After Effects. Uh, it, it eats up a lot of uh, memory and everything. So I find the best way to kind of preview this effect is to do so without the motion blur and make sure that you're getting as many echoes as you want. And then when you're ready to actually render the footage, you go ahead and add back in the motion blur and everything, right? Um, so this now is ready to go to render and it is ready for us to see. Uh, the caveats, of course, using this technique are that while I'm getting a nice motion blur that looks fairly natural for uh, the footage that I've created and everything, uh, this doesn't work for showing me the movement of the tether. Um, it is also very, very difficult to get this to work on nighttime footage if you are using LED poi that changes color, because of course the sample that we've asked After Effects to uh, follow is a number of pixels of a particular color. So if the color of your glow poi change over the course of their movement, you're, you're going to have a bad time. In our next video, we're going to move beyond techniques that require the use of pre-existing footage for the first time using simulations to create trails. Now, we can still synchronize these simulations up to pre-existing footage, but it's going to take a bit of work. That we will go into next week. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the flow. Peace. Hey guys, so this series exists for one reason and one reason only, and that is the amazing support of my backers on Patreon. Um, they have been allowing me to tackle more ambitious topics like this one and to create long series rather than just having to do one-off videos. And it's been totally awesome. So if you're getting anything out of these series, then please hop on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up to support them. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. And that little bit of support helps so much in being able to create these pieces of knowledge to put out there to the wider flow arts community. So for those of you guys already on Patreon, thank you so much for enabling me to do this work. And for those of you guys out there watching, thank you for tuning in as well.